Hi everyone, this is a continuation of previous lessons on different skin findings and facial findings of lung cancer. In this lesson, we're talking about five different findings we can see on the hands of patients with lung cancer. And we'll talk about that, but briefly, let's quickly talk about lung cancer and some risk factors for getting it. If you've already watched some of those previous lessons, you can skip this section and go right to those particular findings. So lung cancer can again be broken into two main categories of cancer. One is small cell carcinoma, another one is non-small cell carcinoma. And within the category of non-small cell carcinoma, we have adenocarcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, large cell carcinoma, and bronchial carcinoid tumor. And the risk factors are tobacco smoking, secondhand smoke, radon exposure, radiation, environmental pollutants, asbestos exposure, and family history. Now, some of the more common symptoms of lung cancer include a cough. It's going to be a persistent cough. We can see hemoptysis, so coughing of, of blood, and constitutional symptoms, which are more systemic. So we're going to see severe fatigue and weight loss. So those are going to be the more common symptoms of lung cancer. But we're going to talk about findings we can see in the hands in patients with lung cancer. So again, a lot of what we're going to talk about could be due to perineal plastic syndromes, meaning that it's certain compounds that the cancer is producing, could be hormones, it could be cytokines, and this is going to lead to particular findings we can see in the hands. So we'll talk about that as we go through the next upcoming slides. One of the findings we can see on the hands of some individuals who have lung cancer is a condition known as yellow nail syndrome. So this is essentially where there is yellow discoloration of the nails. So the nails can become pale yellow to green in coloration, and what we're going to see is it's going to have slowed nail growth with thickened nails. Lymphedema may also occur as well, so there can be some swelling of body parts. And this is going to be a perineoplastic syndrome. Now, this can resemble, in some cases, onychogryphosis, which is a particular finding we can see with the nails that can occur with repeated trauma to the nail. So that is a separate condition that is not related to cancer. If you want more information, please check out my lesson on that topic. But this is one of the findings we can see in certain types of lung cancer. Now, another potential finding we can see on the hands is acromegaly. So acromegaly is going to be something that occurs in non-small cell carcinomas. It is where there's increased size of the hands. So it's going to be where hands enlarge over time. And this is going to be due to the cancer releasing high levels of growth hormone. So that growth hormone is going to act on particular parts of the body, including the hands, and some other parts we'll talk about here in a moment, that can increase the size of those parts of the body. So this would be considered ectopic growth hormone. So growth hormone comes from the pituitary gland, but in this case, it's going to come from the cancer. And it's also associated with other signs and symptoms, including large feet. So you may have your feet enlarging over time, there may be coarse facial features, and even headaches, and some other findings as well. Now, acromegaly is actually a condition that can have nothing to do with cancer. It can be due to excessive growth hormone that's produced by the pituitary gland. So there can be patients who have acromegaly that are not related to lung cancer. But again, there are some types of non-small cell carcinoma that can cause acromegaly. So this is one finding we can see. And again, we can see increased size of hands and some other findings as well. Another finding we can see on the hands in patients who have lung cancer is what we call perineoplastic acrokeratosis. This can go by other names, including acrokeratosis perineoplastica or acrokeratosis neoplastica. And we can also see it being referred to as Bezex's syndrome. Now, Bezex's syndrome can also be a genetic condition. So there can be some confusion with names here, but we'll go with perineoplastic acrokeratosis. It's going to be associated with squamous cell carcinoma. And what happens with perineoplastic acrokeratosis is that there's thickened skin on the palms of the hand. So there's what we would call keratoderma. So there gets thickened kind of scaly types of skin on the hands. We can also see peronychia. And normally peronychia, when you see this term, it's going to be due to an infection. So an infection in and around where the nail meets the skin. So if you're looking at these image here, this is peronychia. Normally, again, it's going to be due to some infection, but in perineoplastic acrokeratosis, we can have peronychia, so reddened, painful sores around the edges of the nail that are not due to infection. So this can also occur in some patients who have squamous cell carcinoma as well. Another important finding we can see in the hands that's going to be the most common hand finding in lung cancer patients is digital or finger clubbing. So 
This occurs most commonly in adenocarcinoma, but we can see it in other types as well. It's going to be, again, clubbing of the fingers. And what does that mean? That means that there's an increased angulation of the nail bed. So the nail bed changes angulation. And what does that mean specifically? Now, if we were to look at this image here, this would be a normal patient. If you were to get them to put their two index fingers together, you're going to see a little gap in between. That's called a name, Shamroth's window. But if you were to do it to a patient who has finger clubbing, you get them to put their two index fingers together like this. Because of the change in angulation, they actually don't have that space anymore. So you can see a complete change in the shape or what you would expect to see. This is also associated with other lung diseases, not just lung cancer, and it can also be associated with other cardiovascular conditions. So again, this is going to be the most common finding we're going to see in the hands in lung cancer patients, and we can also see in other patients hand swelling because this finger clubbing is going to be associated with hypertrophic osteoarthropathy. So the hypertrophic osteoarthropathy is going to lead to clubbing of the fingers, but also some other changes to the hands as well. So we can get some pain, we can get some hand swelling, etc. And then finally, another finding we can see in the hands is perineoplastic dermatomyositis. So again, this occurs in adenocarcinoma. And more specifically, we can see other findings with perineoplastic dermatomyositis, but what we're going to see in the hands is Gautrin's papules. So Gautrin's papules are these violaceous or kind of reddened or almost purplish colored raised skin lesions on the joints of the hand. So in this image, you can see in the knuckles, in the joints, these are Gontrin's papules. So we can see it on the MCP joints, on the PIP joints, and even on the DIP joints, that furthest little joint of the fingers. All these can have these sort of reddened, raised skin lesions. Please check out my other lessons on lung cancer if you want more information on other important skin findings of lung cancer, if you want to learn about the signs and symptoms of lung cancer in general, or if you want to see how it's diagnosed and treated, please check out my lessons on those topics. Please consider joining as a member for members only content. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you again soon.